unique 24-hour home on CBS Sports. Bulls hang on. Braves, Jordan, Segu, the guards, tremendous tonight. Thanks a lot, Dave. We welcome you inside the jar. Action continues here on CBS Sports Network as Ball State takes on Akron. Alex Obario alongside Tim Doyle. Glad to have you with us here on CBS Sports Network. And Timmy, this is a big matchup here. We've talked about it uh, throughout the day about how important this game is, even though it's early in the schedule. Uh, both these teams have won three straight. They've opened up 2-0 in conference, and both of them are doing it with their defense. Ball State on the air only allowing 61 points per game. And Akron in conference, only 57 to their opponents. So Tyler Cheese picking up the personal foul here. Sending Kyle Mallers to the free throw line here for Ball State. And knocks them both down. It's a 2 0 lead here for the Cardinals. And Akron 12 and 3 overall. They are unbeaten this season here at the Jar. Meanwhile, for Ball State, they're winners of three in a row, nine and six on the year. Also 2 0 in MAC play. As Jackson, the reigning East Division player of the week, carries one from downtown. And Akron gets the lead. Akron was trailing 2 0. That was the first time they've trailed so far in the two conference games so far. Taking a look at the starters here Bumbalo, Elamine. Coleman, Mallers, and Teague. And then Ch Christian Jackson says having a heck of a year. The junior, just five foot eight to me, but he's he's a spark plug for them. Oh, uh, you saw him bury the three there. Lauren Christian Jackson out of the 3 1 2. That's Chicago. He has been excellent in Mac games, averaging over 20 points in two Akron wins. Cheese with it inside the lane, trying to get rid of it. Dishes off underneath to Williams. Up and under move, just a little floater and puts that one in. Williams is a transfer from Dayton. He can do a little bit of everything. Almost 14 points, almost 10 rebounds, blocking shots. He has been dynamic for John Gross. With the ball here is Coleman, and he turns it over. Call for the personal foul. Take another look here, Tim. Yeah, great soft touch from the Springfield, Ohio native. Big thing about him is, goes to the free throw line, makes his free throws too, almost 87%. He had a huge game earlier in the year against Marshall, 25 points, 14 rebounds. Akron's got four players that average double figures. Ball State's already turned it over three times early on here in the first half. Floating up for the alley, couldn't get it though. Bring it the other way. This is Thompson with it here for Ball State. Ball State in the red. Akron bringing out their gold uniforms. Second year they've worn those gold. Now let's take a look here at uh, Coach Whitford, part of the Sean Miller coaching tree, but also had some time with Dad Mata as well. That's a little common denominator between these two coaches. And he was telling us, as uh, John Gross did as well, uh, Timmy, that these two have so much familiarity that they notice the taping marks on the court. And that's how familiar they are that they just looked at the court right away and said, yep, that's a Dad Mata guy. Yeah, it was interesting to see that the tape was left there from Akron's practice. And not that Ball State used it, but Whitford noticed it and he goes, oh, yeah, we do the same exact thing. <laughs> so these two teams know each other. I expect a low-scoring game, even though Akron's a squad. Then go out and get you 80, 85 points in a game. And Ball State's coming off 88 against Buffalo in a win where they shot 55%. I think this is going to be a grinded out type of affair in conference. Two teams off to great starts. We've got a delay game warning against Akron. Akron with the basketball now. Another turnover for Ball State that's already four here in the first half. Here's Jackson. Pulls up from 15. No. Now it's Cheese, and they'll dump it down low into React. And we got a whistle and a foul from behind. Timmy, your keys. Well, for Ball State, they got to take better care of the basketball. Uh, they're throwing the ball all over the place. That's going to be a key for them. Uh, Akron wants to play fast. They want to go up and down, and they have to force turnovers, and they've done it so far. When Akron's banging down double-digit threes, they're almost impossible to beat. Both of these teams, tremendous defensive clubs. 
especially from the three-point line. Akron, one of the top ten in the country in terms of three-point field goal percentage defense. You can see both these teams are fired up. Alex Del Barrio's first game on CBS. Emotions are running high here in Akron. They haven't lost their last nine games at the jar. Here's Cheese. Step back. No. In and out. Ball tapped out, and they say last touch Ball State. It's Akron Ball. As for Ball State, they have really had an up and down year as Whitford was trying to figure out, all right, what's my lineup going to be? He's got so much young talent on this team. Called the number of some of the young guys. They've responded. They're playing their best basketball of the season. Yeah, he's done with the last uh, same starters for the last seven games, actually right after uh, one of their earlier losses. When they went to Hawaii for a stretch, played well there despite some really tough times in terms of tip-off as we get the jumper there from Mallers off of one foot. You said some of their games are at what time? 8.30 in the morning, Christmas Day, with four people in the building. Yeah, I'll know, I know this. Getting up at 8.30 in the morning in college for a student, not fun. It's not fun now, and I'm 37. But that's... Tip time, getting up probably 5:30. And even miss from the outside. Offensive rebound, Akron. Tyler Cheese. He's really a big part of what they do as a supplemental player for them. Well, they really run two backcourts with Jackson and Cheese. Cheese has had five games this year where he's had 20 plus points. This is Ishmael Lamin with the basketball here now up top. Back to El Amin, who's really stepped up his game, buries the three from the wing. Yeah, yeah. Here Jackson loses the handle, he turns it over. Bring it the other way is El Amin. He'll pull up, this little teardrop shot and puts it in. And now Ball State, up 9-7 here. And if that name sounds familiar, it should. That's Khalid El Amin's son. And he's lost a ton of weight, and he is playing his best basketball of his career. He's 6% body fat. Jackson on the drive, rattled it in and out. Ball State bringing it the other way now. If I was Ball State, I'd get Elamine a touch. He's starting to feel it a bit. Here's Elamine coming off that screen. Now takes it in himself. He goes down hard in a traveling violation. For those of you watching on CBSSports.com, our streaming coverage will now conclude, but we will continue on CBS Sports Network. You can find us by going to CBSSportsNetwork.com slash Channel Finder. Changed his game altogether. He averaged five points as a freshman, seven points as a sophomore, and now 14 points a game now. His confidence is sky high. He's playing his best hoops. Another takeaway. This time, Ball State taking it to the rim. Thompson, good defensive play. Akron, now they'll bring it on the break. Coach Gross told us earlier that they were looking to run in this game because Ball State's so good in the half court defensively. Ball loose on the floor. Whistle blows. And the possession arrow sends it back to Ball State. Beg your pardon. Ali Ali picking up the personal foul. The freshman out of Kendallville, Indiana. I think both these teams just need to take a deep breath as we take a look at John Gross. His third year at Ohio, spent five seasons at Illinois before that, four seasons at Ohio. And I asked him on the sideline there at Kent State, I said, does this team remind you of your Ohio squad? Because, you know, they're led by two guards and Jackson and Cheese, and he had some special talent there at Ohio. DJ Cooper was a fantastic player. There's a drive, offensive foul. Point of emphasis this year. I mean, we got eight combined turnovers. We're just five plus minutes into this game. So when Ball State is taking good care of the ball, they've gotten some good looks. Well, that's an easy call. Good job by the defender getting outside that arc. Love the arc, Alex. What did Coach Whitford tell us that uh, you could probably expect Akron to try to take a lot of charges? They just did there, but miss on the other end offensively. Some struggles. One of their last eight now for Akron from the field. They trail at 9-7. Ball State with it now. This is Elamine. I would try to get Teague a touch here. He hasn't had much success with the ball. 25 in red. It's Thompson. 
Now here's T taking it to the rim, left-handed layup is good. The prognosticator, Tim Doyle. You just felt it coming, didn't you? Well, here's the thing. Tajay T, I'm not scared to say this. I think he could be the conference player of the year this year. Now, he's that dynamic. He's 6'8", he put the ball on the floor, he make a three once in a while. He's enough of a threat that you have to go out there and guard him. But sometimes you have to be selfish for the goodness of your team. Like when your team's in a rut and you're throwing the ball away, like once in a while you got to go, okay, I'm the best player. Let's get me the ball. And whether it's him or Elamine, they have to step up for their squad. He's averaging just under 14 a game is Tajay T. We talked about him in the open. And a traveling violation on the other end. Yet another turnover for Akron, uh, for Akron. Five now for them. Uh, and Teak's a guy who didn't start playing basketball until he was 14 years old. He actually said his older brother was actually the, the better athlete. Now his cousin is Jeff Teague, longtime NBA vet. And I think Teague has that sort of ability. I, I have to shore up his jump shot. He's not a three-point shooter yet. But I think he's still getting better each and every day, which is crazy to think. Field goal percentage second in the MAC. Gets it to the bucket a lot. Miss on the inside there for Ball State. Now here's Akron. Christian Jackson with a nifty crossover. Takes it to the baseline, kicks it back out. Bounce pass underneath. There's a deflection on a kick ball. It'll stay here with the Zips. I mean, give Ball State credit. It seems like they have like seven guys out there. Just no driving lanes, active hands, and that is their calling card. James Whitford has come here to seventh year, and he finally has maybe the team that best describes his personality, and a lot of those guys are young. And stepping on the baseline there, or pardon me, the sideline is Channel Banks. So get a shot here of Tajay T. Like we mentioned second in the conference in field goal percentage. He's just a, a beast inside. He works his way to the basket. He's so athletic. Last out against Buffalo. 25 points, 9 rebounds, 3 steals, and a Ball State win. Here's Coleman, and we're going to get a blocking foul called it against or Christian Jackson. I no, it, player it, control it, the other yeah. way. I mean, this is exactly what you talked about before, Alex. I mean, this is what Akron does. Uh, El Amin, uh, Coleman doesn't like the call, rather. Right, Akron, watch. You at home, you make the call. Yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot of bodies there, you know. Do you remember that segment? You make the call. Shows how old I am. Here's Cheese with the jumper. Puts that one in. Akron was on a scoring drought. Had zero points the last four and a half minutes before that bucket there from Cheese. Yeah, they went six straight empty possessions. Now, no Teague out there. Or, or Alamine. Like, who's going to make a shot now? Uh, if your ball stay, I try to get the ball to Coleman. Bumbleo can also... Knock it from long range. He had the ball just a second ago. Here's Mallers. Up and under, throws it up. Floater off the mark. And lost the handle out of bounds.
So far, so good. I mean, what an amazing story John Gross told us before the game. His first year here. He's going to pass inside and a foul underneath and going down hard. It was uh, Van Riak of Akron. A bit shaken up. Take another look at it. Yeah, there was the contact there from Hazen. Well, he's going to stay in the game here. Getting Tough back one, to, just like you, Tim. Yeah, getting back to John Gross, year one. He only had eight available players midway through the season. He went over to the rec center and picked up a player who ended up starting for him <laughs> later in the year. So now in his third year, he has a more dynamic team, scholarship players and all. Offensive rebound again. This time it's Banks on the wraparound for three. He misses in and out. And a loose ball foul underneath against Akron. You know, it's both these teams average over 70 a game. Akron at 76, Ball State at 72. And right off the top, I had the feeling this was going to be a grinded out type of affair. Both these teams, 2 0 in conference. Similar style, similar coaching trees for the coaches. They saw the tape on the floor. Like, when you know someone that well, it's so hard to score on them. Here's Coleman on the drive with Ball State and puts it in. That ends a scoring drought there for uh, Ball State of the last two and a half minutes. And Coleman's a redshirt freshman at 6'5, runs a lot of point for them. Huge, huge upside. Channel Banks with it here for the Zips. Now pass underneath. React caught underneath, trying to get a reverse layup. Tough angle shot for him. Now work it inside now. There's Teague again, finding some room. Those easy buckets underneath him. Yeah, he's going to finish career, Alex, at this rate with over 1,500 points, over 900 rebounds. And he has just been wildly consistent this year. This is what I like about Tajay Teague. He never seems to be rushing. He plays at his pace. Great job just YMCAing it with the ball fakes. Got his defender off the ground. Saw the double flex, too, right after he laid that one in. Yeah, and he told me... Ages 7 through 12, Teague would rather play video games than anything else. And now he's out here, arguably one of the best players in the MAC. So, parents, if your kids are at home watching YouTube all the time and playing their video games, there's hope. Tajay Teague was doing the same thing, and now he's dominating college basketball. Jackson at the free throw line here for the Zips. And we talked about him quite a bit. Started all. The games this season, all 15 of them here for Akron, averaging 16 a game. Great free throw shooter at 86%. Barry's two there. Akron's just trying to find some points right now. This game has been sloppy so far, too. A lot of turnovers and fouls as well. But credit the defenses on that. Here's T. Setting the screen for Bumbleo. They'll double him. Trying to take to the baseline, and he travels. And these are the types of turnovers we're seeing. It's the ones caused by traps. It's the ones caused by switches, things like that. I think these two teams know each other. Yeah. And who's going to be able to counter? Who's going to be able to go on runs? That's going to be the difference in this game. Adjustments at halftime are going to be huge. Here's Banks. Fall away for three. No. Shooting percentage not too good. Right now for Akron, shooting at just 25% right now. Teague, again on the drive with the reverse. There comes the double flex again, and a timeout taken by the Zips. English off the backboard. It's a page of Steve Nash. The hand switch right yes. there. Teague. But that was like the last guy I would think about. Teague, three of four from the field. The rest of Ball State, four of 13. He's the only one kind of feeling it right now. Zips with the ball now. Three-pointer in the corner is good. Williams hits from long range. And Akron closing the gap here. They've got it down to three. This is LME. Coleman underneath. And they're getting some easy buckets right now, Tim. 
Great job of Coleman using his size against the five foot eight Jackson. This is Williams again. Here comes the double. Miss. Why is the shooting percentage so low right now here for, for Akron? Teague on the other end. He misses. Rare miss for him in this game. Or overall. Here's Jackson. Long range for three. Off the mark. Teague with the board. Jackson picking up Coleman full court here. As they get it to LME. He can make that shot. Now, you don't want to shoot an eight like you did against Loyola Chicago, but he can't. Now it's Coleman again with the lay-in. And Ball State, the buckets that they do have have all been layups. And Coach Gross called a timeout earlier. He's not too happy about those easy buckets. It happened quite a bit in the second half in their game against Western. There's... Coleman skips it over to T. Thought about it. Spins in the lane, draws the contact, gets it to go. Count the basket of a foul for Tajay T.
six of their last seven from the field right now. They're on a 6-0 run for the last 96 seconds or so. And T goes to the foul line to try to complete the three-point play, and the southpaw puts it up and in. And Hazen will come back in. Teague will hit the pine for a bit. Yeah, you know what I always love to watch? Like, you take Teague out, and I'm sure head coach James Whitford is thinking, like, all right, maybe we can get him to the under four. You know, but you got a 10-point lead. He's rolling. Man, it's hard to take out a guy who's playing that well, but I, I get what he's trying to do. you got to give your guys a break. Akron shooting his 25% from the field. They've only made five field goals. They're not going to get an attempt here. That one taken away. Thompson to the rim. Off the window. No. Tapped out of bounds. Stays with Ball State. Man, there was a lot of body contact there, huh? Well, we expected this game to be physical with the way these teams play defense, with the way Ball State actually has committed fouls so far this year. And Thompson is a walk on still but gets a lot of quality minutes jumper in the corner miss akron with the rebound this is jackson boy the zips would like to get him going right now and on the drive bubble picks up the personal foul how about this first stat we're not even 13 minutes into this game that is the sixth foul that Lor Lauren Christian Jackson has drawn. He's drawn six fouls, which is new to the stat sheet here. Because I'm not that intelligent, so when you, like, mess up, or the, what I would call it messing up, when you change something, it took me, like, weeks to figure that out. I was like, huh? What does FD mean? Yep, These so fouls drawn. I'm still trying to get used to the new NCAA stat sheet myself, my friend. Used to the old automated scorebook, man. Here's Ball State with it. Mallards. Now into the post. It's Hazen. To the outside. Elamine misses front rim. I, I would get Jackson back in the pick and roll. Like get him going north and south. There you go. Porter. Don't take the three. Jackson things down a lot of early shot clock shots taken by both of these teams here's banks misses off the back rim and another offensive rebound here for akron but the misses keep coming to here's jackson floats one up for the alley -oop. finishing there was sales the junior out of cincinnati ohio and that gets the jar going Under six minutes to go, first half. This is Mallers. You see if that dunk can rally the troops here for the Akron Zips. Elamine, step back, no. Jackson comes up to the board. Takes it in himself, underneath again. Contact there. Out of bounds. And Lauren Christian Jackson just does such a great job of putting it. That's almost like Wesley Snipes esque to Woody Harrelson. I mean, it was just a perfect pass. Like anybody could have dunked that in the movie White Man Can Jump. Right on the money. Sales doesn't play a ton of minutes. But I think John Gross is just looking for some answers, and he's given them some valuable minutes with his energy. Hair flopping everywhere. When you got the hair flopping, the crowd feeds off that. Well, you know a lot about hair, don't you? Best hair in the Big Ten. Is that voted on or is that self-professed? No, it, it, it was a marketing ploy because we were so bad that that's all they could market for the team at Northwestern. How many city buses was your face on? I try to steal every one of those signs. Right now, Akron trying to get back into this one. And... Another offensive foul means another turnover for Akron. That's turnover number eight already first half. You, you know what's amazing, Alex, is if you're John Gross, your team has not played well. You have not executed. You're trying out different lineups. You're down six. Like, two-possession game. Now, this is an Akron team 
that against West Virginia and Louisville, they're down four with a minute left. So they can play with anybody in college hoops. Here's Coleman again to the rim. This time he misses, but the tip in is good. There comes the double flex again from Teague. G's on the drive, on T, he misses. Well, he altered that shot. He didn't block it, but he altered it for sure. Kick out, good swing around, good ball movement. Coleman for the three, off the mark, and a foul underneath. And Zaharius Williams and Tajay T. These are two big body guys going at it. Obviously, Teague's had a great game. Now, Williams doesn't like the call, but Teague's on the floor, and he didn't just end up there. So both teams now in the bonus with 4.33 to play here in the first. Teague on the front end of the one and one connects there. Teague already with 12. He's well on his way to that double-double. After the miss, foul on ball stayed on the loose ball and is on T. What's not working for Akron right now? They're, they just have no rhythm, and that's because they're not making perimeter shots. Like, if you go down and bang down a few threes, now confidence is high, and coaches don't want to hear this. But when you make a shot, you play harder on defense. Now they want you to play hard regardless, but when you make a shot, you feel good. You're, you're just more willing to give effort. They've just had so many possessions, empty possessions because of turnovers, not making threes. And I actually think they should be down more. And the fact that you make this free throw here, you're only down seven. If you can keep this in single digits, which obviously they're doing right now, uh, they're going to give themselves a chance to make a comeback in the second half. So far for Akron, eight turnovers here in this first half, just six made field goals. That shooting percentage still at 25%. It's Williams connects from the free throw line there. They are perfect in the strike. Zone. Watch T on this play come high. There's the screen and roll. Coleman, they close up the gap on him that time. Try to get it back to Teague. He retrieves it before it goes out of bounds. Thompson trying to get it up there. Might have been deflected. Here's Akron on the break. Trying to get out and run. Trying to get it back out to the wing. Nobody there. The turnover will send it back to the Akron Zips. They need to find some offense here. The Riders Tough.
I favorite to win the Mac. Experience, toughness. They went to Bowling Green and took them out to the shed. That was never a game. Uh, but these two teams right now on the floor are playing some stingy defense. Forget about making shots, just getting shots because turnovers have been the story in this game. Akron's had nine so far in this first half. Williams with the following in the lane, puts it in. That ends the string of one of seven for Akron. Is he going to field goal to pull it within five with three and a half to go here in the half? T, he's been busy. Another drive to the bucket. This time, shot altered. Akron trying to make a run of it. Jackson with a beautiful bounce pass underneath for React, and he lays it in. Now the energy in the building starting to pick up a little bit. Jackson, he goes down. If you're John Gross, during the last timeout, you said, fellas, we've turned it over almost 10 times. We're shooting 25% from the field. But we are still in this game. And then guess who? Lauren Christian Jackson dropping another dime. He gets the free throw line. He has basically single-handedly kept this team in the game. The five-foot eight junior from Chicago played high school basketball down in Florida for his dad an outstanding free throw shooter he's had five straight games where he has made at least three 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 pointers so you can see the adjustment from Ball State they're not letting him get to that three point line by sending two defenders and Jackson's doing a good job of finding his teammates this free throw there from Jackson a rare miss for him and 86 percent free throw shooter entering today 7-0 run for the Zips. They've cut it to two. And now if you're Ball State, you got to get a touch here. Here's Coleman for three off the back rim. Williams with the board. That's a good look, though. Can Tyre take the lead on this possession? Contact, no whistle. The crossover. Here's Teams with the reverse, and we're tied. Nine-zero run for the Zips. Mallers tries the three. Another miss by the cards. Cheese off the mark this time. They might have taken the lid off of the jar if they connected on that one. Here's Coleman. Now it's Teague for three. Buries it. And silences. The fans here at Rhodes Arena. Oh, what can't you do? Tajay T. Stepping back. They move the line back. He goes, forget that. Move it to NBA range. The set shot from the lefty. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Jackson floats it up. No. I would go back to T. He looks tired, 25 and red. I would get him another touch. There it is. Doesn't take it. Takes one step in. In and out this time. Shot clock is off. What I want to see here, you've seen it all first half. Get Jackson in the pick and roll. I would get Cheese on his side. That way if defenders come, you could find your shooter. On the drive, a miss there from Cheese, and no shot. 
All right, fans, stay with us. We're at and t in the half. We're going to send you to Brent Stover and Seth Davis with scores and highlights from around. Cal- Good enough basketball IQ that he'll make the pass. He's not like a black hole when you throw it to him and it doesn't come back out. Now, that'd be a good storyline to watch if they start doubling him in the second half. So how, how about El Amin? He's been rather quiet. Hey, get him in some pick and roll situations as Banks gets in the lane. Uh, you can see Akron starting to build with confidence a little bit. That first half was certainly helped the Shelton. I couldn't find really anything to go offensively. There's T. Got to get him the ball there. Uh, there's the double. And a shot from the wing is good as Mallers. You know, he's not missed a game ever for Ball State since he's been here. 114 straight games for Mallers. Alex, that was exactly what we talked about there. There was the double team. There's the pass out. Here's Williams. Buries the three there. So answering right back. We talked about the threes. They only had two apiece in that first half. Both these teams have knocked them down here early. Yeah, Williams has made 37 on the year. He's 33% from deep, so the big guy can certainly step out. This is Elamine with it now. Deep thought about taking another three. Bumbleo. Three in the corner, misses too strong. Chance for Akron to take the lead with a field goal. Here's Jackson from long range, buries it. First Akron lead since it was seven to four early in the first half. And Jackson with the steal. Ball State hoping to get an answer here as they now trail by four. Elamine. That's a teardrop shot from Elamine. And there was that pick and roll that they got the junior in. Uh, this is where Elamine and Teague, when the wheels start to come off, those guys got to get touches. Williams takes a three with a hand in his face. Can't connect. Ball State on the break. Another teardrop shot, this time too short. React with the board. Jackson trying to lose his defender there, out to Cheeks. Ten on the shot clock now. Williams in the corner for three, parries it. Second three and a half for Williams. Five point lead for the Zips. I don't know what John Gross said. I wasn't in that halftime locker room. But whatever he said is working. And I don't know how you tell your guys make more shots, but that's what they've done to start the second half. Burying some threes, something Seth Davis talked about at the half. That Ball State was doing a great job getting out on shooters. Akron playing with a little more swag, playing with a little bit more confidence, and crazy to think they have a five-point lead. Shooting five of six from the field to start the second half after a first half in which they were at about 25% for most of it. It's got to go to Teague on that possession. Bumbleo for three, no. You had Teague on the post up instead of Bungalow shooting the three. Long pass, nearly taken away. Here's Cheese. Circus shot, can't get it to fall. And a loose ball foul called against Cheese. Fans here at the jar didn't like it. Yeah, I think referee Chad Barlow all over that call and spot on. Talk about one of the best young referees in the Midwest. And watch, Cheese goes down. There's some contact. Because if Teak loses the ball there, it's just the right call, and Chad Barlow all over it. Dribble picking up full court here. 
Gotta get some more movement if your ball state. A lot of standing around. There's Mallers on the cut, on the drive, misses. The tipping is good. I don't know how that one went. Time out. With the $5.99 mix and match deal at Domino's. Akron up 44-37 here at the jar. Akron having a sensational start to the second half. Alex Savario, Tim Doyle. What's changed? Swag, confidence, making threes. They've made three of them in the second half. And now, now you got defenders coming out on the perimeter. You got Jackson drawing the foul. Uh, John Gross, give him a golden goal because that must have been such a performance at halftime because his team was not good in the first half. Nine turnovers, shot 30%. As bad as they were, they have been as good executing, getting to their spots, not turning the ball over. Jackson nearly lost his footing there, shooting much better for Akron here in the second half. Seven of nine from the field. Couldn't buy a bucket in that first half. No, and just throwing the ball all over the place. Uh, they haven't turned the ball over now in nearly nine minutes of game time. So the first 17 minutes, they had nine turnovers. Since that point, zero turnovers. 14-29 remaining here in regulation. Akron with a 44-37 lead in the basketball. Here's Williams. Slips and falls in the corner. Don't even mop that up, but you mentioned no turnovers lately. That one probably not Williams' fault. Yeah, I mean, that was... I mean, I've seen the floor, that slippery at Manny's. With some natty lights on the ground, but not on a basketball court. Don't ask me how I know that, all right? If you've ever visited the beautiful university that is Akron, you know what Manny's is. Going back to that uh, line you were saying about uh, the turnovers, it's the first Akron turnover in 10 minutes. So doing a much better job taking care of the basketball, which is obviously something Coach Gross talked a lot about with us at shoot-around today. I, I go two-man game here. Elamine or Teague, one of those guys has to be your playmaker. This is Thompson. Up top it goes to Hazen. Elamine with 10 on the shot clock. Hazen again. Elamine, five on the shot clock now. And with triple all over him, they finally blow the whistle. 14.02 remaining here in this second half. Then with a 44-37 lead. Fans, we want to apologize for the technical difficulties we're having. We know we can't show you the score on the screen right now. We're going to try to keep you updated as much as we can. So bear with us. We're doing our best to get it back to you. But our score 44 37 13 55 to play in regulation a completely different start to the second half here for both of these teams ball state so much more in control in that first half akron couldn't find a shot it's kind of been a role reversal a little bit yeah and tajay teague who was outstanding in the first half you heard seth davis talk about 15 points eight rebounds in that first half he's only taken one shot here in the second half Bumbleo in the corner coming off the screen and an offensive foul called against Hazen. I get what James Whitford's trying to do, get Teague a rest, but there he goes back into the game because uh, uh, this is crunch time in my eyes. Like, Akron goes down here, makes a three, they're up 10. I, I get that you're trying to get Teague to that under 12 timeout, but I, I think that's a smart, wise play by Whitford to get him back out there because, to be honest, he's been their best player. He's been everything for them on offense. Hazen picking up his fourth foul. Here's Jackson outside. Miss tip out, though, comes right back to it. He had cheese there on the back door. Did you see that there? Alex could have just left it for him. Here's Williams. He's been kind of hot. And he continues, hits another one from downtown. Akron with their largest lead of the game at 10. 47-37, 13-12 to go in regulation.
Teague. Bounce passes it to no one. Teague, Teague taps himself on the chest saying, my bad there. Darius so Williams has been awesome in the second half. Banging down threes. Grabbing rebounds. He's got 11 rebounds, 17 points. And he has been the X factor. It was really Lauren Christian Jackson in the first half and all Williams in the second half. Williams has made five of his last six from the field. A little teardrop shot there from Tyler Cheese. He now has eight. And it's a 9 0 run over the last three minutes or so for the Zips. The lead is up to 12 now. A great job by our producer, Joel Cate. We talked about at halftime the run Akron made. It was a 9 3 run to end the first half, and the momentum that they had, Alex carried over to the second half. Shot in the corner, miss there from Mallers. Now it's Cheese, taking it to the rim, lowers the shoulder, and offensive foul is the call. The two officials looked at each other. Just to kind of confirm it, it was an offensive foul. Cheese picks up the personal foul, his third. 12-17 to play. And still a 12-point lead for Akron at 49-37. Good fans, if you just joined us, we apologize for the technical issues that we're having. Don't have the score bug for you underneath. But we'll keep you updated and try to get it back up and running as soon as we can. Right now, Ball State with the basketball here. Trailing by 12. Get it into Teague. Gets himself some room down low, but couldn't finish. Cheese with the rebound. And React shake it up. Got it poked in the eye or something. Here's Williams again. Rattles one home.
When he steps on a basketball court, he's a scoring threat. Two of the best scoring guards. That's going to be a must-see college basketball game. And this has been a must-see second half from Akron. This is a Zips team that took West Virginia, took Louisville right down to the wire. They were awful in the first half, but they have been dynamite to start the second half. The dynamite from downtown as well. Five three-pointers here in the second half. Had just two in the first. They're on a 23-4 to four scoring run over the last eight minutes. Yeah, and this is where Teague, no field goals made, no points in the second half. He needs to get the ball here. El Amin, those two guys need to step up for your squad. This is Coleman. Out to Bumbleo. He launches the three and puts that one in. That ends the 12-0 run from Akron. Uh, that was their best possession in the second half, Ball State. Well, they got the mismatch with Coleman on the 5-8. Jackson waited for the double. That was really good basketball. You know, they're a team that makes a lot of threes as well, Tim. They only have four. Two in the first and so far two in the second after that one from Bumbleo. Here's Banks for Akron on the drive. Floater, it's good. That's a guy who 76% of his made field goals have been threes, so you want him to put it on the floor. Channel Banks did. Channel Banks scored. Channel Banks from Las Vegas, Nevada, the senior. Here's the mismatch again. Let's see if they send a double. Oh, they switch Jackson off. There's Coleman back outside. Got to go down low to Teague. He's got the mismatch. Five on the shot clock now. It's Teague. Takes a long-range set shot jumper. It's short. Here come the Zips. It's Cheese to the rim. Lays it up. Puts it in. Zips up 16. Get out of there. Here's Cheese. Yeah, Akron's been able to uh, get some easy buckets, bang down some threes, and uh, Cheese showing some emotion. Uh, there's a lot of frustration there from the Zips in the first half, and he comes out of the game with well-deserved rest. Wouldn't you love to know what John Gross said to his squad, but you had a feeling that Akron was just hanging around in the game, and then bam, has hit you with this huge... Second half run. Darius Williams has just been incredible. We're halfway through this second half and a whistle. What's not working for Ball State right now? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Teague's not scoring. Elamine's not getting the ball. Turning the ball over. Great adjustments here. You touched upon this in the first half when both teams are kind of grinding it out. You said adjustments are going to be huge. Well, so far, first. 10 minutes this second half edge John Gross and his coaching staff you know and he was very disappointed in his team in the second half of their last game against Western he he said in his uh, press conferences defensively we came out strong I thought in the second half we were awful on that end of the floor we defend like we did in the second half we'll get run out of here on Friday night well his unacceptable second half against Western is not happening so far tonight against Ball State This is an Akron team that right now, in the net rankings, there are 42. 12 and 3. Talked about their three losses West Virginia, Louisville, and Liberty. They could get an at large. Now, the scenario is, right, almost win out in conference, go to the championship game, lose in the final. I, I think they get an at large. Uh, but there's going to be some competition. And my favorite is still Kent State. Boo Man Williams is an awful difficult guy to handle. Jackson to the rim is foul. He'll go to the stripe here. Be on Bumbleo. And he touched on it, Tim. The Zips being so high ranked in, in the uh, in the net, up to 83 in Ken Palm. The BPI at 82. They're making a case for themselves. What's one of the reasons they've had so much success this year? Because they weren't predicted to 
finished that high in the MAC this year. Well, I think they're guards, and, and John Gross proved at Ohio. You give him two capable guards. You know, he had guys like DJ Cooper, Amon Bassett. He has capable guards, the Jackson and Cheese, and it's been their defense here. They came into the game allowing only 57 points in conference games. Teague was great in the first half. They completely wiped him away in the second half, and then good call. Once again, Chad Barlow all over it. The referee on the sideline. The lead is up to 17 here. Akron underneath. Oh, the flush there from Reese. And Reese has been given a technical foul. But Reese, look at this finish. I'm looking more, I mean, great delivery. I mean, it was all set up by Jackson. Obviously, Reese with the finish. I mean, I love the emotion. I love the fact that the NFL lets the pros go out there and celebrate. Obviously, it was a exuberant college kid, big play, three-point play. I didn't see him get in the face of any Ball State players to do out. I, I didn't. A official kind of got him after he started pounding his chest a little bit. With a pounding of the chest, now, that is an emphasis. Now, I, I remember was sitting in, even when in college, like, remember the U used to do, like, the throat slash and the pounding of the chest. That is a no-go zone. Is Ishmael Lamine goes one of two from the foul line and puts the finger to his mouth to... I guess yeah, quiet the crowd here yeah. at the jar, but it's I a 60 know. to 42. I don't know if that's the... The right time for the silencing of the crowd when you're down 18. That seems a bit unusual. Well, and all that, Reese fouled on that dunk, and he's going to the line here. A little bit of a thud on the free throw attempt. 9 20 to play. Akron sitting pretty right now. Another turnover for Ball State. Nine sixteen left in Ball State has not been able to stop this Akron offense. No, Darius Williams has been electrifying. More in Christian Jackson off the pick and roll. Williams has just been a beast on the backboards, burying threes. It has been all zips in the second half. Just five foot eight. Lauren Christian Jackson, and he has really been the story, distributing, making things happen. His ball handling has been tremendous. Chicago kid. Went to high school down in Florida, played for his dad, and he got like this matchup against T. Here's a floater, and Jackson with the little teardrop. The lead up to 20 now. Seven of their last seven from the field. I know that whole tale of two halves thing is a cliche, but it's really been the story here for Akron. Another miss from Ball State. They pick up the loose ball as Elamine puts it in. First field goal in the last three minutes and change for Ball State. Yeah, there's just been no answer for Jackson with the ball. I mean, he's just doing whatever he wants as far as getting switches. John Gross is going to take a timeout, but he's got him and happy. Up 18 points. Banging down threes. And he is a really nice fit when you put him with Cheese and Jackson. That's why I think this Akron team, you do not want to see them in March. Akron with that 62-44 lead, and that's rejected from behind by T. They're 14 of 18 from the field with that block shot. Before that, they were 14 of 17, Akron was. 82% before that block shot. That's wild. 9 of 10 from two-point range. Here's Jackson with the shot clock. Lightning down, and he buries it at the horn. You want to 
Plus, oh, I, 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 I'm surprised. I didn't see enough evidence to overturn it, did you? Uh, I did not. You know, the, the ruling on the floor was good. Um, but they're up 18, so... Worst problems to have. Correct. But if I was Lauren Christian Jackson, I'd still want that for my stats. That's good news, though, for Ball State as they try to rally back in this game as Elamine takes it to the hoop. You mentioned him. He needs to get more active and getting to the basket, drawing fouls. It's kind of his game. Well, John Gross has done a great job of rotating, whether it's cheese or triple off the bench. And he's made life difficult for Ishmael Elamin, who's having just a fantastic year. He's been double figures all but two games. We talked about trimming down. Got a chance to talk to him before the game. He said he stayed at school almost the entire summer. I said, what were you working on? Like making 500 shots? He goes, all I was working on was my diet. He said, I would not eat after 11. No more pop. No more sugar. So I said, you got to have one guilty pleasure. And he just looked at me dead in the eye and he said, Skittles. I said, I'm so sorry. i got to have Skittles once in a while. And then I proceeded to ask him about my body because I've got to be honest, Alex, I'm not happy with it right now. We all have resolutions and maybe LME could become my trainer. Well, they praise the strength and conditioning staff here at Ball State for getting LME in that position down to 6% body fat. And Coach Whitford, big on that body fat uh, number with all of his players. Down below. Good possession here. Great ball movement. Here's Teague with that left hand. Can't finish. Last touch by Cheese. And he'll stay with Ball State with 20 on the clock. Yeah, Ball State was moving there. Move ball was going side to side. It was good post up for Teague. Took some contact, but that was one of their better possessions in the second half. And they have not had much go right here in the second half. And the Teague has been ice cold in the second half. 0 of 5, and there's El Amin hitting one in the corner to try to stop the bleeding a little bit for Ball State. Just the fifth three of the game for Ball State. But Akron's got one of the best three-point field goal percentage defenses in the country. I like this matchup here. Jackson versus Teague. Let's get it back to the point guard. Jackson, stop on a dime, floater, no good. The follow from Cheese is off the mark. Now here's Elamine on the break. Dishes to Teague at the last second, and the reverse is good. What a catch, huh? Now Elamine threw a fastball, and the big fella had a hand on it. And John Gross takes the timeout. And now you wonder if that three was a turning point. Ball State trying to back. You know, there's always pivotal plays in games. The three they took away from Jackson would have put Akron up 21 instead of scoring run. And Ball State stop and score. They cut it even to nine. Here's Williams again for three. Way short this time, but Cheese with the offensive board. Reverse layup. Good on the foul. Cheese with excellent position there for the offensive board. Great position, but what a crafty finish from the lefty. Watch how he just flips this ball up. I mean, he didn't even know where he was. I mean, that's just great court awareness. From the junior from Georgia. And when you're a scorer, and that's what Cheese is, five games this year where he's had 20-plus points, you just know a way to get buckets. And that was a big basket there to kind of stop the bleeding. Third offensive rebound of the game for Cheese. The Akron lead is back to 15. Watch out, Tim Doyle. I would give anything. And I would be amazing for like the first 90 seconds. And then when you can't breathe, you can't really play sports. The lungs are important in the game of basketball. Few people can flip that switch. The nature boy Ric Flair was able to do that. Always able to do that. Didn't matter what kind of night the nature boy had the night before. Here's Teague. Puts it up, puts it in. Teague now starting to get going a bit. That last layup that we saw a couple of possessions ago, his first points and nearly 15 minutes of game time. And now he's had a couple of buckets here in the last few possessions. You got to get stops though. Yeah. Cheese on the drive. Kick out. Corner three for Banks is off the mark. Williams had the offensive board, and then a foul is called. 
All right, let's take a look at the East standings here in the MAC. Akron again at 2 0. You mentioned Kent State earlier. They're 2 0 as well. Those are the two teams that expect to compete out of that division. Then there's Ball State right up there with Central Michigan. Yeah, and I think it's surprising. Uh, Toledo 0 and 2. Um, Northern Illinois, Eugene German just falls out of bed, scoring 20 a game for them. But in my eyes, Akron, Kent State are your two favorites. Clear cut and Bowling Green, Justin Turner's not healthy right now. They got beat up at home by Kent State. But they got to get that dynamic guard playing his best basketball. But John Gross has just got to love what he has seen in the second half. Lane violation from uh, Cameron Reese nullifies the free throw attempt from Williams. And now Ball State still in striking distance here. Bumbleo. Now outside, a three-pointer, good. Thompson hitting from long range, and the deficit is now 10 for the Cardinals. He only shoots 23%, but he shot that one with confidence. Trying to dump it into Williams, has to come out to get it in the corner. Nice little backdoor pass to Reese, and he lays it in. Good look there from Williams. Williams just been magnificent here. Great patience. Waiting for that double. Excellent drop off to Reese. Bumbleo trying to get Cheese off of him a bit. Here's Teague again. Lost the baseline there. Elamine back out to Teague in the corner. No. Under four to play now. Game's kind of slowed down a bit. The early part of the second half, been kind of fast pace. Akron was getting a ton of points. Now you can tell they're trying to whittle down the clock a bit. 67-55, Akron trying to hold on and move to 3-0 in the MAC. 3-40 left. With Sweet 16. Now we've seen in college basketball, whether it's Stephen F. Austin winning at Duke, whether it's Evansville winning at Kentucky, uh, this tournament could be as unpredictable as anyone I've seen in a long time. Now I'm not sure the mid majors, like in Akron, are going to end up getting in at large, but if they did, more so this year than any other year, huh, they would be so dangerous. You know, we talked about Teague having such a great first half, and in the second half, just two of seven from the field. And it's kind of really one of the main reasons why Ball State has struggled so much in the second half. When one of your number one guys goes ice cold, it's going to be hard to win games on the road. Here's Mallers. It's Thompson. Bumbleo. Couple dribbles in, the pull up, misses. Teague with the rebound. Caught up underneath, trying to retreat, passes it out and turns it over. A five on four, but as smartly, Jackson pulls it out. Eight assists, 19 points. To the dynamic junior from Chicago. Jackson. Stop to the block. Now Cheese. And there's a whistle. Free throws coming up for Cheese. No losses this year at the jar. The score holds up. Improved to 10 and 0 at home. What a fast rise for John Gross. You know, early in the telecast, talked about year one. He only had eight players, active players. He had to go to the rec center to find just guys that could play. And that guy from the rec center started ended up games. started. Yes. So Cheese with one more. Nothing but the bottom net. Akron will have Northern Illinois next. A 
Lucas Smith was that player who was picked up at the rec center. And they only had eight players. It's gone down in Akron basketball lore. Playing in the rec center, then you're starting for the Zips all in one season. Akron uh, turning it over there. Five. Fouls on Reese. We can't come out of the game. Let's take a look at what's coming up for the Zips. We mentioned Northern Illinois. Team at 8-7 and seven on the year. Toledo should be an important one for them as well. They don't get Kent State until the end of the month. So, room for this Akron team to stay unbeaten for a little bit here. But as uh, Coach Gross told us, he thinks the Mac is wide open this year. I think every coach says that. It also gives them some wiggle room. I actually disagree with him. You disagree with him? Yeah. I think it's Kent State and them. I think it's them and Whitford. Trying to find some answers there. This team was really good defensively in the first half. Had Akron throwing the ball over the place. Zips had nine turnovers the first 16 minutes of the game, and then they went eight minutes without a turnover. Jackson to Williams. Dump off underneath and a foul. So here's what's ahead for the Cardinals of Ball State. They trail 71-55 here tonight. And looks like they'll fall to 2-1. and one. Eastern Michigan. Miami, Central Michigan. Still some room for them to increase their record. Yeah, now, now I think Ball State's in a different conversation than an Akron. Like, uh, yes, maybe the middle of that pack is more wide open, and there really isn't no basement team in the mat. You got Buffalo struggling, Toledo struggling right now, and they were actually picked towards the upper half. But I, I think there's a different class in the MAC, and I, I think Akron's in a different class along with Kent State. But on this Akron team, Tim, they just do so many things well. They rebound the ball well. They play defense. They hit threes. Uh, you got point guard who's really an extension of John Gross on the floor, whose dad coached him in high school. I mean, Lauren Christian Jackson has drawn. Digest this number. He has drawn 14 fouls today from his defenders. Uh, what that does, and here's a switch. Like, you keep getting this matchup. Jackson on Teague, you're going to win a lot of games. Nice crossover. Jackson takes it in and rejected by Teague. Minute 25 to go, just two left on the shot clock here. Jeez, inbound, fall away at the horn. No, here's Teague. Up ahead here to Elamine to the rim, and he scores on the land. Fans here at the jar, proud of the effort, especially in this second half. The adjustments Coach Gross made certainly worked. Here's Cheese with two on the shot clock. Lost the handle, puts it up at the horn, and puts it in. 75-57. Elamine with the head fake and buries the jumper from the outside. Three points. Just Tenths of a second difference in the shot of the game clock. Coach Gross tells Jackson, no need to shoot it. Fans getting on their feet. Have to be pleased with the effort of their zips. Uh, what a second half from Akron. A 9-3 run to end the first half. They came out in the second half with some momentum. They shot 63%. They banged down five threes. 
That's going to do it. Here for the Zips, Coach Gross.